Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to The Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. And it brings me great pleasure to introduce to you a woman who is committed to breaking the chains of financial bondage in the Pan-African community, Crystal L. Gump. Crystal is a fiscal strategist whose female-focused economic organization has transformed lives throughout the Midwest. She is the founder and CEO of the Amazing Woman Network, a social enterprise aiming to reclaim personal power through mind, body, and spirit. In her leadership role, Crystal advises clients on how to forge advantageous social relationships and amass wealth over a broad spectrum of investments and strategies, including home ownership, entrepreneurship, and more. Her people first business approach is summated in a quote by black baseball legend, Jackie Robinson. A life is not important except on the impact it has on other lives. Gunn holds a bachelor's in business administration from Michigan State University. She launched her career over 20 years ago, beginning in the mortgage banking and management, later branching out into speaking, authoring, coaching, and activism. But what the highlight of her career has been is that Crystal was also the 2023 U.S. Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award recipient for the work that she has done with financial literacy. It brings me great pleasure to welcome Crystal Gunn. Hello, hello, and thank you so much for having me here today. I'm super excited about this conversation. I am so excited to have you here. You are that breath of fresh air and that light that enters the room. And so I'm so glad you're here in our space. <laughs> I know, I know, because we're usually in someone else's space, so this is going to be good. I didn't know I was going to need tissue for this interview because you're going to make me cry. <laughs> well, if I, I, I just... I'm just so excited to have you and what you represent is so, so important to Black women all over the world, to people all over the world. Let's focus on some of the work that you're doing right now. Let's talk about how you're doing financial literacy for the community, the Black community, and especially women right now. So there's a, there's, there's a couple things. And one, I do have um, a nonprofit, United Community Solutions. And through UCS, we're able to go into communities. And I, I like to target specific communities. And when I say that, anybody from across the, you know, the city, the state or whatever can come to any of our workshops and clinics. However, I can have a greater impact in a specific community, right? And so through workshops and clinics, and when I say clinics, I mean, we're actually doing the work. I'm not just sitting in front of you, giving you some information. We're going through the process to help you improve whatever it is you need to improve financially. So that's one way. The second way is I, I still do personal one-on-one -on -one coaching for individuals trying to better their fi financial position and also with small business owners, or what I like to say is micro business owners who have this you know, great idea, or they're still in that startup phase, no matter where, however many years they've been in business and want to just elevate to the next level. And the third thing, which I'm really, really excited about, which I just recently launched was, or is something called the Single Black Mothers Collective. And mm, okay, I was at an event last March, so March of 2022, and Dr. Boyce Watkins was the keynote speaker. And one of the things that he said was single black mothers are at the bottom of the wealth ladder. And that hit me kind of wow. different because I divorced. We divorced when our daughter was four. And I remember what it was like being the only person in the household with an income. And so I said, well, wow, if single yes. black mothers are at the bottom of the wealth ladder, that means the children are at the bottom of the wealth ladder as well. And it was in that space that I knew and it was like that download, you have to do something specific for single black mothers. So where it, and of course, spirit will give you a glimpse or a preview of something. It doesn't always mean you have to do it right that moment, but you'll get that preview. Yeah. 
And so it literally, through all of the other things that I was doing, I had to make space for, but I knew I had to do something specifically. And so if knowing the work that I do in whatever area it is, it always falls under reclaiming our personal power, mind, body, and spirit, reclaiming our financial power, and increasing our social involvement. So the Single Black Mothers Collective is just not about financial, but it's about total healing. So I, because I am a financial strategist, always lead with financial. However, it's about personal healing, self-care, finances, uh, but also healing that relationship with the father of your children. Doesn't mean that you're yeah. going to be in the same household again, but our children need to see healthy relationships so that they then know how to have healthy relationships, how to financially co-parent well, right? If you have a small business, we're going to help you to get that small business and grow that small business. And so it's 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 nationwide. So you have the ability to then bond with and find like-minded women that are going through this process as well. So I'm excited about that one too. So you said a mouthful right there and I want to go <laughs> back over this. We're going to break this down. We're going to break this down little by little by little because people need to hear this. There's mm -hmm. the piece on financial literacy. There's the piece on there's the piece on healing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Healing through this. The piece on um, relationships and having a decent relationship. And then there's a piece on the co-parenting. And each one of these is a topic. And I just feel we would not be doing the audience any justice if we didn't break down some of these pieces, yes. right? So let's, let's talk about the financial literacy, first of all. Mm -hmm. Our relationship with money and our understanding of money is only what we've learned and gleaned from our parents. Most of us who've come up, and I grew up in New York City, mm -hmm. you know, just like everybody else, you're, you're in Detroit, mm -hmm. I'm in New York City, mm -hmm. but we grew up, our parents did the best that they could. They knew that they had to meet their bills, but nobody talked to us about financial investment. Nobody talked to us about how to make money. And when I say make money, I mean the fact that you look at a portfolio of something, you make a selection of choice, you monitor its trend, and then you basically identify what it is that you want to select and take a, a, a limited or mitigated risk to basically try to make some money or, right. or, what, or shares, shares mm -hmm. of stock. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I remember going into corporate and there I was 21, 22 years old, going into corporate and they're like, okay, sign up for your shares of stock, sign up for your this, sign up for that. And I didn't know what half the portfolio meant. Yeah. Now and here I am. Yeah. You weren't alone though. You weren't alone in that. <laughs> Most people don't know what it means. So how, where do you begin with that? Where do you begin? I mean, we can go budget 101 and then help me build from there where do where do people go and how do they glean financial literacy if they were to take this task on themselves so the the first thing that i want to say is don't take it on yourself doesn't okay. mean that you necessarily have to have a a a a a a one-on-one -on -one coach but you should be sitting in every every opportunity that you have to sit in in a workshop you, be it you're paying for it or it's free. You need to be there every single time. And the worst, the worst, the thing that kills us or one of the things that kills us a lot, there, there's actually a few. When you have these workshops and people don't show up or we don't show up. And I always say it's because of a few reasons. One, we're worried about what someone else is going to think. Right. Oh, I'm in this right. credit workshop. I'm in this fight, whatever workshop, because I don't have my stuff together. And the reality is you don't have your stuff together. So you need to go and right. be somewhere so that you can get your stuff together. You can get the information. So we have to stop thinking and caring about what someone else thinks, because 
the current statistic is about 78% of people right now in the U.S. are living paycheck to paycheck. So if you're in a room with somebody or you're in a room with 10 of your friends, seven to eight of you are living paycheck to paycheck. That's just the reality. And it's not 100% your fault, right? So you have to realize that and just forgive it and let that go. The other thing that keeps us from learning more and getting to our own individual next level is, oh, I make good money. So you think because you make X amount of dollars that there's no financial education that you need. And that's furthest from the truth because you make this money, but you're not keeping any of it or you're not being strategic with it in order to yes. be able to build wealth. And so it's, it's, it's those things, it's those two things or on the credit side, oh, well, I have decent credit. Oh, well, I have good credit. Yeah, but you need to credit laws change, things change. And you may realize that although you've been paying your credit, your creditors on time every month and you have a decent score, it doesn't mean that you're using credit effectively. So I okay. think, yeah. So where you start is you have to show up, right? You have to, you you have to show up to get the knowledge that you don't have. And the most interesting thing is we don't know what we don't know. So you don't, you know what I mean? You don't even know the questions to ask half of the time because you don't know right. that it's a thing to even ask about. And social media where it does a great thing and also has kind of messed a lot of people up because you get these 30 and 60 second sound bites. And we live in a day and age where people don't want to do their own research and they don't want to go. So they think they've gotten this, you know, all oh, this 60 seconds and they told me I'm a small bit. All I need is an LLC and, and, and a business and a, you know, 700 credit score and I can go get all of this money for my business. And it's like, no, it's a little bit more than that, that you have to do. So I, you start with getting the knowledge first. And, and, and I would say, okay. second, this is a question that I've never had anybody just be able to answer. When I ask the question, how do you want to live the rest of your life? Ooh. And people say, oh, because if you don't know, we can't even start to build an efficient and effective budget because an efficient and effective budget isn't just about paying and tracking the bills that you pay. It's about creating a system so that you can live the life that you want and not the one that you get just after paying your bills. And but see, I have, to inter I have to interrupt you here because most of us, right? This is why I always say dream a beautiful dream where you'll be drowned, right? Yeah. Because most of us don't dream big. No. Most of us will sit there and go, okay, mom and dad made it. I just have to make it, right? Mm -hmm. I'll just pick the job. I'm going to be that job. I'm going to work it for 20 years, 40 years, 30 years. I'll yeah. retire from the job. Yeah. I'm going to be a post office worker. And uh -huh. well, you know, I just need to be able to live because this is the uh -huh. way I've been living. And I didn't hit this until corporate where you know, I'm, I'm looking at these peers and they're like, I want to, I want to retire with $3 million in the bank. And I want to retire with, and for us, I'm going to talk about as a person of color for us. Okay. Most of us coming out of a middle class, just making it where we're, we're coming, we're not at the bottom of the rung, uh -huh, but we're, uh -huh. we're comfortable, uh -huh. right? We don't think that big. We, we weren't thinking that big. Like I want to retire with um, a couple of million under my belt and relax and ha have my home paid for and, and taken care of and blah, 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 blah. We, we, we don't think like that. At least I did not coming up in the beginning, 21, 22, 23 years old, <laughs> thinking like that. I'm a product of what my parents are. And my yep. parents, you know, work hard. My mother was a nurse. My father's a mechanic. You know? Yeah. We don't realize so, how what we what we were taught growing up, what we were not taught growing up, mm -hmm. what we exactly. saw, what we were told and what we overheard impacts what we're doing right now today. Mm -hmm. I have a client who in one of our first sessions, you know, going through discovery, she has five or six credit cards. They're all maxed out. And one of them 
<laughs> she had a credit card that she had used to pay off all of the other credit cards, right? So she had done it. But then those were zero balances and she maxed them out again, right? And so no judgment. I never judge anybody because what what it what it is is what it is. We then go in and try to fix it. Well, in a I don't know, two or three sessions later, she was saying that she was trying to plan a family trip. And her mother said, oh, I can't go. My credit cards are maxed out. I'm trying to pay this credit card debt off. And I said, hold on, wait a second. And I said, your mother's credit cards are maxed out? She said, yeah, my mom's credit cards are always maxed out. She says, forever, they've been maxed out. I said, and so are your credit cards. You pay them off and you max them out again. And she said, oh. I said, it's a learned behavior. You are functioning and operating the way that you've been unintentionally taught. And she says, and she asked a great question. She says, well, now that I know that, how do I change it? Mm. And I thought, that, right? <laughs> I just thought that was a great question. But we look back and we, if you, if you grew up watching your parents work from sunup to sundown, and you'd hear them say they still can't make ends meet. And you find yourself working from sunup to sundown. You still can't make ends meet. It's in you. Because that's what yeah. you saw. <laughs> it's, it's what you saw. And that branches us into the next. Because I wanna, I'm going to circle back. I reserve the right to circle back to that. But yes. I'm going to wait until we get the feeling. I'm yes. going to wait until we get the feeling. All right? So here it is. We know that we need the financial liter uh, literacy. Right? But then I'm going to go into the fact that we've been cultivated a certain way. And whether we know it or not, we are operating off of poverty consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I want to explore poverty consciousness before we go into healing. And we may not recognize we're operating off of poverty consciousness, but we are. Because number one, the fact that we're holding credit cards and we're maxing out credit cards and we owe credit cards, right? Um, guilty is charged too, right? So oh, here we, been there. yeah, we're, we, we have these credit cards and we're like, well, I'm never going to get ahead. So I might as well just enjoy myself that there it starts mm -hmm. here and where it starts, right? Not that I'll make a purchase, I'll pay it off because that's what I can afford. And I used it for the purposes of what it's supposed to be used, which is at the moment, I didn't have the money, but I will have the money. I'll pay it off in its entirety. I don't keep on going, you know, and then I'm done. And mm -hmm. then I can manage this little by little by little. But then what happens is that this whole system is set up to keep you in poverty consciousness. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going there, okay? So <laughs> it basically is set up that what you do is you get bombarded with materialistic things that you don't need. Yes. You get bombarded with a vision of, of how you're supposed to live above and beyond your means, right? That the things and the materialism that you, you do dictate wealth and how people perceive you, right? Which then does a whole psychological job on, well, what I have is what I have, but it's not enough. I want to be looked at at the next level, no matter what level you're at. I don't care if you're at the top. Right. right. You get the top of the level wealthy and you're like, well, I have to have acquired the next mansion because then that'll put me in the status of such and such and such a thing or perceived as such and such and such a person. And it's not only just a poverty consciousness, it's an addiction. Oh, yes. An addiction. And I never knew that until I stepped out of why am I doing what I'm doing? These alert behaviors from television, from 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 um, uh, peer pressure, okay? From being driven by your family because they want you to do better than they did. So when you have the better car and you then you're justifying that you did better than they did, you know? All of these things combined, how does a person even survive it, let alone change that poverty consciousness thought? I mean, this is why I say you walk on water for me because this is this is huge. This is huge. <laughs> and I look at this and you know, it's like I'd say 99.9999% of the United States thinks like this, of Europe thinks like this. I can't say that for Africa. Correct. I can't say that for Africa because they prepay everything. People uh -huh. pay as they go. Uh -huh. And so when they can't afford it, they just have nothing, but they're not in debt. But they're not in debt. 
but they're not so, but the, 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 the whole system is designed to keep you in a state of unbalance because if you're unbalanced right if you're out of balance <laughs> then you can't figure out if you're out of balance you're surviving you're trying to figure out oh i'm out of balance how do i stay in balance when when you, and it's subconsciously you don't know it right most people are living right. Like you said, poverty consciousness, but also in survival mode. So when yes. we go back and we think about survival mode and what that does to your body, it's the same. It's it's the amygdala alarm is sound, and it's the same. It's the same trigger of if 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 you're walking up the street and you think someone's about to rob you, and that fight or flight mode kicks in, right? So. And and when that mode kicks in, access to the cortex part of your brain is cut off. And in the cortex part of your brain, that's when rational thought, creativity, and all of that is housed there. So if I'm living in survival mode, I don't have access to that. So I can't even figure out how to get out of this mess, even if I could. So when people say, when, when they're drowning and they say, I've, I've had people say, well, no, let me try to fix it before I come see you. And I'm like, no, because you're not going to fix it right because you don't know how to fix it right. Because if you did, you wouldn't be in the situation that you're in. And you it, it may take some creative thought in order to get you out of the situation that you can't figure out because your survival mode, you don't have access to the cortex part of your brain, right? So this system is designed to keep you out of balance because if you're out yeah. of balance right and it does so much more than just your finances it's going to impact your health which makes the system more money right yeah you got to continue right. to go to work because you're going to work to pay your bills and you can't stop going to work because you have all of these bills because society says you have to have all of these things to make it look like you have to so you have to go back and you have to sit and you have to say how do I want to live my life my life, not concerned with anybody else and what they think and what they see. How do I want to live my life? And how do I want to leave my life, right? And so you have children. What are you leaving for your children and your children's children's children? With, we should right. be thinking generationally and we're thinking today and you can't think generationally, generationally if you're living in survival mode or if you're living paycheck to paycheck, how do you think right. about the next generation when you're thinking about how am I paying my rent next month? And not only that, you know, they raise the age of retirement. And the reason they raise the age of retirement is because we have to work because we're not saving for retirement. We're and they don't want to take retirement. care of everybody at the age of 62. So they raise it conveniently to what, 68, 70 years old, whatever, they, whatever it is right now. And who wants to work that long? Long. Exactly. So that exactly. goes back to saying, how do you want to live the rest of your life? And so when someone says, well, I want to retire or I don't want to work when I am, you know, I, I want to retire at 50 or I just want to do what I want to do. And that's, that's fine. But how are you going to get there if you have nothing in retirement right now? And right. if you are not working towards that and you keep spending every dollar that you make on things that on cannot things. help live the rest of your life. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's shift this conversation to healing. Yes. Right. To healing. And I want to go back. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to kick it off this way. I want to go back to the comment that you made, which is, well, that makes sense. Your mother's credit cards are maxed out. So your credit cards maxed out because it's a learned behavior. And, you know, that my work is always about the emotional foundation that people build and work on to start reflecting inward to monitor your own behaviors and to monitor and inventory your own thinking in terms of the decisions that you make, how mm -hmm. you make them, why you make them, the motivation behind them. And one of the very first things that people have to learn is in the phrases, it stopped with me. Just because mm -hmm. my mother did it and my yeah. grandmother did it doesn't mean that I had to do it. 
just because my great grandmother had headaches and my grandmother has headaches and my mother has headaches does not mean I have to have headaches. And yes, some things are hereditary, right? But it stops with me means that the learned behaviors that brought upon that dis-ease or disease in the first yes. place, once yeah. they are unlearned, the pattern is taken out. And by the way, your parents and your grandparents and so on taught you those patterns because that's what cultural conditioning is. We learn from our parents because that's the way they know. So mm -hmm. we just mimic them because it's repetition. It's always there in front of us. And that's how we learn to survive in this circumstance or this world. So we do it the way they did it. And then when we get a little bit older and sometimes we deviate, sometimes we don't. If we truly deviate, then we don't take on the same characteristics and, and things that, that, that they did. But if we do not deviate, and for the most part, we do what they learned, then we take on the same baggage they had, right? Mm -hmm. So the first mm -hmm. thing that I work with, with is, is like, let's, let's heal the ancestry and let's stop it right at your generation so that you don't yes. turn around and keep passing it on to your kids and, and, and so on and so forth in your family. But talk to us a little bit about the healing as you see it, coming from the perspective that you're, you're coming from. I always say that it's not enough or it's not just about getting decent credit or having an efficient and effective budget. It's also an emotional, a spiritual thing. You have to heal your relationship with, 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 with money, with finances, why you do the things that you do. And it's interesting when I started this journey of financial literacy, right. Or financial empowerment, cause I don't like the word literacy, but when I started this journey of empowering people financially, I didn't realize that there was so much other healing that need to happen that was tied to why people operated the way that they operated with money. So when you start to heal, I always start with finances, even in empowering women, even if I know we're going to talk about the person that, right? I, I start with finances. One, because I'm a strategist, but empowering women, I know that if you are financially empowered, you've changed and healed some other things in your life. <laughs> so when we yeah. talk about healing, it and when you start to heal your finances, some of those other things are naturally going to heal because you are mm -hmm. addressing why you're operating the way that you operate. And then when you start that healing, it's like my brother always says, you can't stop the avalanche. So it just starts to heal everything and you start to pay attention. You don't know how many times people have said, oh, I went to do a thing and I remember what we talked about. And I was like, oh, no, I can't do the thing because it doesn't align with how I'm trying to live my life so I don't you cannot I, I don't believe you can have a solid and strong financial relationship without doing the other personal healing as well I, I don't think it can happen I haven't seen it yet and I, I love what you're saying and it's true because we're all one and it's connected. So you can't work on the mind that's not connected to the body. Mind, body, activity, rationale, all of it. It all fits into one. Um, one of the things that I love to do is I love to define relationship because we talk about relationships with people and we talk about relationships with money, right? And I think that relationship boils down to two words in the foundation of the relationship, freedom and love. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening is that when you feel you have too much freedom, somebody, the relationship says, OK, I got to bring you back to the middle because too right. much freedom, freedom is going wild. You're going crazy. But then if, if you don't have enough freedom, you're like oppressed. Right. So you're struggling going, I need more freedom. I, I, I need to be able to break out. I need to feel like I can just go and in this case, purchase something or in, in a regular relationship be who I am, right? So there's that balance, that freedom has to find its center, right? And then and then the love and that love of money, and I love money, 
but do I love it to a point where it's egotistical and I'm just hoarding it and I'm, I, I can't let it go and, and I, I'm greedy for every little thing? Or am I on the other end of that, which is my love is so free. Hey, everybody here, I can throw it away, blah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> or bringing it back to that center. And I, I think that that looking at that from the core foundation of people and the way that we struggle in our relationships of loving each other or not loving enough or over overdoing it and and, and 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 consuming somebody with our love versus and then the same thing with freedom you know and and that we have to find that happy balance and so what i've learned to do is i've learned to always look at am i in my center right that's a love in my center yeah, yeah. Um, when I do something, is it the love of doing it? And that byproduct is the financial reward that I get for doing it. Am I in a love of what I do? Mm -hmm. And that might be a funny way of looking at it. No, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I had to write that down. Am I in my center? That it just makes perfectly good sense. And again, we're not in our center because mm -hmm. that Society is keeping us out of balance, right? And to be in balance, we got to be in that center and we're not. And it impacts every area of our lives. And Negative. I'm going to talk, yes. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about it from the perspective of emotion. All right? Yeah. All right. Because I feel like there's four areas. I, I, I operate in mm -hmm. educating people. That there are four areas that we looked at. Fact, emotion, perception and spirituality fact emotion spirit uh per perception and spirituality and most of us we see the facts as nothing but the facts we strip away the emotion the facts are the facts fact is you're spending too much money fact is my credit cards are overrun fact 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 right now mo most of us operate from emotion emotional mm -hmm. spending emotional eating well i don't have it anyway i might as well just go ahead well, you know what? I'm really frustrated right now. I think I'll go out and I'll do this, 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 and this. Well, I needed to treat myself to that vacation. I know I can't afford it, but I just don't care because I need, and that emotion, we're in it. We're mm -hmm. so busy reacting that mm -hmm. what's happening is that our emotional body is leading. And what we have to do is we need to call that emotional body back because we do have a choice what aspect leads our being. Absolutely. If the courageous woman is going to lead me, the courageous woman is going to say, you know, you have no business spending that money. Stop. Mm -hmm. Don't do that right now. This is going to dig you into a deeper hole and every, every little bit counts. All right. So that emotional body, we need to move from that emotional body when we're, when we're dealing with our finances. Okay. And then the perception, 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 perception. How you're perceived, well, I'm not perceived with having enough, so I got to do blah, 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 right? But the perception should be able to put you in a more observant <laughs> mode, an observance of ourselves. And this is something that I teach people, mm -hmm. how to observe themselves, observe your own actions, observe what the trigger is that puts you in that emotional place, observe. Yes when you're reacting to somebody because you feel the lack of not having enough or you feel insecure and you want people to perceive you a different way. Yes. And it may not be fact, you might be just giving your power away, okay? Yes. But the fact that you're perceived to have, have done this and, or your perception doesn't align. Spirituality is about balance. <laughs> Spirituality says, that I'm going to be able to be in my emotional body, but come up to perception and back to uh, uh, the facts and then come mm -hmm. back up to spirituality. But I'm going to have an overall balance and understanding that this is the way I think. This is what triggers me. But I have the self, the fact is I have the self-discipline to catch it and correct it. And I'm going to just operate here at my peace. And mm -hmm. I'm going to be at peace with it. Mm -hmm. But I can't be at peace if I don't know what my peace looks like. Exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. And so if you're not aware 
Yep. That I call it being in the movie instead of watching the movie. Watching, right? <laughs> right. You're, if you're in the movie, you're like with the main character and you're reacting the way the main character does. Yes. Oh my God. Oh, I did. Mm. How could you do that to me? What did you do? Blah, 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 blah. But if you're the observer of the movie, you're going to go, ooh, it's going to go all the way to here and watch this drop. And then it drops. And you watch and you go, okay, let me insert myself in, take care of what I need to do now, come back out and observe to see what Everything. And that's a different person. Everything. You said it at the beginning. Everything goes back to self. Never mind everything. everybody else, what everybody else is thinking, what everybody else is driving, what everybody else is buying, what everybody else is putting out to the public that may or may not be true. What do you want? Like at the end of the day, what do you want for you? And what do you want for your family? What do you want? And you have to be strong enough to say, I don't care what everybody else thinks. I want this. I'm not going to drive this yet because I need to make sure X, Y, and Z is taken care of first. And we build your efficient and effective budget so that you can live that life that you want to live. But you also said something really powerful. You got to, you have to sit in the thing. We have to figure out what, what, what's triggering us. I had a client who she probably had about fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 worth of credit card debt. She were, had two young children under the age of 10 who had never been, um, on a vacation they had never been like had never been to disney like, had never been you know to i don't know the water park in another state had never been there right and in talking about um the debt and she would say well she she goes shopping and i says okay well why she says because when i go shopping i feel really good i get to put on a pretty dress and, da -da 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 -da. and i says okay that's great i says but you just said 10 minutes ago that this credit card debt, thinking about it keeps you up at night. You have this pit in your stomach because of it. And now you're working weekends and overtime to try to pay it down, which means now someone else is taking care of your kids on a weekend. You can't do the things with your children that you want to do. So when is enough enough? And sometimes we have to have someone that's going to say the thing to us to make us start thinking about the thing because we're just, again, in survival mode and we're going from one thing to the next to the next. We're operating, we're not planning, we're not being intentional with what we do. So I said, okay, well, I under, and a lot of times people think, well, if I do this budget, I ask all the time, well, what do you think about budget? When you hear the word budget and people think sacrifice or being controlled or whatever. And I'm like, you build it based on how you want to live your life. So if you know you'd like to travel, we need to put money in the travel account. If you like to shop, we need to put money in, in, in that so that you can do it freely and it doesn't implode or throw everything out of balance. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's and 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 but taking the ownership. And I, and I always say, okay, in order to heal your financial relationship, which then overflows into everything else, be it good or negative, so we're going to heal this financial relationship, you have to look at the past and how you got here, right? Because you got here. Right. And as a really good friend of mine says, you show up to everything that happens in your life. You are that common denominator. Right. Yes, there is all of this going on in the world outside, but you can step back and say, what am I going to do? So we have to look at how you got here. We got to look at the past. You got to face it and you got to realize the part that you played in it, right? How did you give away your power in this thing? So now you faced it, but now you have to forgive it. What happened yesterday happened yesterday, right? We now need to build based off that life that you want to live from today forward. It doesn't mean that you're going to be there tomorrow, but we have to start planning with intention for you to be there. And then we fix it. And fixing it is, again, creating that efficient and effective budget or what I call that financial system, system of success and learning the necessary things and plugging those things in that you don't even know need to be in. And then you can take that information and teach it to your children, your mate. Um, and then that's how we break that generational curse. Yeah, like you said, yeah. it stops with me, right? So now it stops I know with it stops with me. Yeah.
And, and so I would also give yourself some Go grace. Ahead. You got to give yourself some grace in the process. It's yeah. like, you can't just feel bad about the thing you, and <laughs> someone's, you know, you always hear, hear the, the saying, when you know better, you do better. And that's actually not true. It's when you know better, you have the choice to do better. You have the choice to do better. And I'm going to add to that a little bit too. Because one of the things that we go is forgive what, what do you mean forgive myself or, or forgive the situation? But when we don't forgive, all right, we look at the whole situation through the eyes of pain and that pain mm. causes us a trigger and that trigger just reinforces the behavior that you're trying to stop in the first place, okay? So that, that forgiveness really boils to forgiving yourself because that judgment of self Judgment is a manipulation of behavior. People judge so that, that they can get a certain behavioral reaction in the end. You know, yeah. so that's why they judge you, right? Mm -hmm. They want a certain, they, they're trying to manipulate the behavior in the end, right? So then you go to, well, why is it important? And, and what happens when I judge myself, right? But here's the deal. When you judge yourself, all you're doing is manipulating your own yes to the behavior you know good and well you're not supposed to do, right? <laughs> this is why we, but it's true, you know it's true, Crystal, yeah, right? It is. Well, yes, it that. is. I'm so dude, I, I shouldn't have did that. Oh, well, I'm going to do it anyway. What the heck? I've already done it now. I feel guilty, but I'll just put them in to make it feel a little bit more guilty, right? Yeah, right. And then right. the other piece of this is giving our power away to the judgment, right? And when I say giving our power away, that means a, adapting an emotional response to the fact that somebody said something and that triggers us to do it again and triggers us to do it more or triggers us to do when we know good and well, if we just ignored them and mirrored it back to them, that there was an underlying manipulation yeah. and there was an underlying agenda behind it. And if we just sit in our own truth to say, I don't care what anybody says, it anybody thinks anybody does this is where i'm at and you all can talk all you want about me or about the situation or whatever the case may be this is where i'm at you know it's like being that rock in the middle of the stream everybody's running downhill but you decide to stand still stand still okay stand still and and stand in your truth regardless of what the perceived um judgment is or what the perception of the judgment is you know, so there's a lot of that emotional baggage that we carry that sits there. If we could just deal with it and look in the mirror and say, I will no longer lie to myself about this, you know, <laughs> manipulate my own behavior to justify yeah. doing. It. Yeah. There's, there's power in the pause, right? Thank you. There's yes. so much power in the pause. Yes. If you just don't react, don't do the thing, don't just hold on for one second so that you can sit in it and think about the outcomes, if it's the best thing for you. And yes. a, a majority of the time, you're going to be like, this is not what I need to do. You don't need to address anybody else with it. You don't need to do, you know what I mean? You don't need to do all of these exactly. things. It, and as you start to heal and pause, right? As you start to pause and heal in your in your financial relationship, right? And then you're healing in these other areas. All of those other things, all of those other people, all of those, they just kind of fall to the, they just fall away. They like do. you don't have to, you don't have to kick anybody aside. They just kind of fall away because you're operating on a different frequency than they are. Yeah. And they won't know why they're not calling you. They won't know why, right? And you don't throw them away and you don't, you may circle back and, you know, see them at a picnic or party or something. And that's cool. But you are trying to get to your next level. That's why we're here. We got to elevate to that next level. But in order to do that, you have to release things that no longer serve you. Exactly. And that's, <laughs> That means relationships too. Yes, yeah. it does. Yes, it does. Yeah. And sometimes I'm going to dare go there that it, it even means certain family relationships too. That sure. you have to put a boundary there. And it's like, you can, you may not cross or we will never have a discussion about money. We yeah. we may not talk about money together because I've actually done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have so, to. 
Yeah, you have to do that. Oh my gosh, we're coming up on an hour and you I know, know I, I know. <laughs> I know I looked and I was like, okay, we are have to start to wrap this <laughs> and But I told them before we started, like we could talk for hours about hours, this. Yeah. This really is going to be, I can't wait to till till this interview gets pushed out because I love to be able to talk about finances, but in this way, because so many times you hear people talking about finance and when you think about financial literacy or financial education, it's always just about the numbers, but it's so much more right. than just that. It's so much more than just checking off. It, it, it's, it's, it's so interesting. I was having a conversation with my daughter who had taken a job and she's 22 and it was like, okay, will you come back from school? She graduated and it was like, you figure out what it is that you want to do, but you need to be earning some revenue right now. And she took this job and you know how the, 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 the younger generation now, I actually love how they do it. So all of the people that got hired in together, they, they're in this group chat, right? Okay. So payday happens and they work from 1.30 to 6.30 and payday happens and they get a paycheck. I don't know why direct deposit wasn't whatever, but they get a paycheck. And the group chat over the weekend was on fire because I deposited my check and I don't have access to my funds. Um, my, you know, the bank put a hold on this, that, or the other. And my daughter's responding in this this group chat trying to tell them because you know who her mother is trying to tell them well yeah, yeah it's one it's the weekend two it was after and someone on that following Tuesday was still complaining about they didn't have access to their funds but the young lady deposited her check into her grandmother's bank account and I said this is why I do part of why I do what I do because you would think that these 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 22 to 32 year olds should know better but somewhere we failed them and i can't be mad at them but somewhere right. we we failed them and my daughter said she was like this is really sad and i said yeah it's sad for a couple reasons one that they've gotten this far in life and they don't know these basics but two they either don't have or cannot have these conversations with someone at home that can instruct them on how to do it properly. Properly. So we wow. have to, so that goes back to that, what you saw, what you were taught, what you heard, what you overheard, what you weren't taught when you were growing up impacts what you do for the rest of your life. So when we're mm -hmm. healing ourselves, especially as women, when we're healing ourselves, we're not just healing us. We're healing our mates. We're healing our children, we're healing our community, and we're healing generations to come. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, that is a phenomenal last. I'm, I'm leaving it at that. We're gonna, we're gonna leave it at that. But tell our audience where they can reach you, how they can seek you out, what they need to do. Yes, so the easiest way is just to go to my website, crystalgun.com send me a message. Um, th there's either even a place on there where you can schedule a consultation, but yeah, just go to crystalgun.com. It's the easiest way. Shoot me a message. Let's connect. The other thing is I love any type of collaborations. If you want me to come out and speak, if you want, you know, help with your credit, if you want help with your personal finances, if you have a company and you want me to come talk to your employees or your staff, whatever it is, I'm willing and I'm open and I would love to do it. This is Crystal L. Gunn. We are so grateful to have you here. This is such an important topic, such, yeah. such an important topic. That's yeah. why, that's why the presidential level has recognized your work. This woman yeah. is phenomenal, everyone. So I'm telling you, if you're having issues, you talk to Crystal L. Gunn. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. Thank so you. Much. Thank you, okay. thank you. Thank you for being as amazing and empowering as you are. The work that you do is phenomenal. And the impact that people that you have on people just by being in the same space with them is 
is something that I've never seen. And I'm so grateful to have you in my life. So thank you very much for being as dope and amazing as you are. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And we're going to keep empowering women out there. Yes. And we're going to keep empowering all areas and aspects of this human condition. Because you know what? We are bigger than, than we perceive ourselves. And it's time for us to step into our power. So Absolutely. again, Crystal Algon. <laughs> Enolia signing off. It's been another episode of The Infinite Way where spirituality meets humanity. And Crystal, we want to reserve the right to bring you back. Absolutely. Okay. Anytime. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.